Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? I can say you could, or you can say turn them back in, like you were saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At this time, I'll call to order, call to order the City of Joliet City Council meeting for May fifteenth, twenty eighteen, and. Uh, we will be led in prayer by Pastor Matt Wolf from the Cherry Hill Church of Christ at 2749 Lancaster Drive, after which Pastor Wolf will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance as well, too. Good evening, everybody. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's so great to be here. I want to first say thank you on behalf of everybody who's gathered here today for your many abundant blessings that we enjoy. Thank you for life itself, for the health that you have granted us in order for us to fulfill our callings for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work in this community and the honor of bearing the appropriate responsibilities. According to Romans 13, one and two, Paul says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. With that, Lord, we pray that the leaders here tonight and those who cannot make it are able to promote peace, order, and justice. I pray for the mayor and for all the city officials here, in particular, this assembled council. So please grant them wisdom, and the sense of welfare, the true needs of our people, a keen hunger for justice and a thirst for rightness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony, even when there is disagreement, and personal peace in their own lives and joy in their task. Father, we pray for the agenda set forth today. Please give everyone here an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around the great city of Joliet. These men and women have a tremendous responsibility to help shape this community, Lord, and we, we know that that's a challenge, but every challenge presents a unique opportunity. This is an opportunity to show the world how to respond in a godly manner through victory and adversity. We pray these things in your awesome name. Amen. 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 Now let's, we'll do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. We'll begin with roll call. Mayor Odeker. Here. Councilman Dickinson. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Girl. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Here. Coleman. Here. Councilman Turk. Here. First on the agenda this evening is a presentation regarding Star Wars Days by the Joliet Public Library. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Megan Millen, Executive Director of Joliet Public Library. At this time, it is my great pleasure to invite you to attend and to participate in our ninth annual Star Wars Day on June 2nd. <coughs> this, <laughs> this event has grown from a small summer reading kickoff to a multi-agency extravaganza that last year attracted over 10,000 people to downtown Joliet. We are really proud to announce that Joliet Library has won the prestigious American Library Association Excellence in Library Programming Award for 2018 for our Star Wars event. We'll be awarded a plaque and $5,000 on June 24th in New Orleans. We hope to see you there and may the force be with you. Thank you. I 
Are we going to get a picture with them? What's up? Proclamations. First proclamation this evening is honoring JTHS Gold Special Olympic Basketball Team. If you watch the uh, mm -hmm. you watch uh, No. I didn't see that. She's a close I didn't see that even. It's, it's always uh, it's always a lot of fun, you know, when we can recognize our athletes, and we've got some ex <coughs> outstanding athletes uh, here today that we're going to be recognizing uh, from Joliet Township High School, the uh, Special Olympics basketball team, the the gold team. Uh, they won a state championship this year, and uh, we're here to recognize them for all their efforts and all their hard work. And uh, I don't know if you 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 guys and girls know that not only are we proud as a city of your accomplishments as athletes, but we're also proud of you whenever you go away, you're, rep you're representing the city of Joliet, not only as athletes, but as our residents, as our citizens. And uh, what's most important is that you're, you're good people, you're good students, and, and we appreciate that, and we thank you for coming down here today as well. So uh, I've got a proclamation here from the mayor and the council. Let me just read it. Um, whereas in March, the Joliet Township High School Special Olympics basketball gold team won the group five state championship whereas the Joliet Township <coughs> High School team brought home gold medals and this is the first time JTHS Special Olympics team has won a state championship the, yeah congratulations the team won the district tournament in January and advanced to the state tournament uh, brackets they went on to play for the group five state title at Illinois Wesleyan University and, de and defeated Vernon High School 63-38. to <coughs> Joliet Township High School team then proceeded to, de to defeat Oak Park River Forest 68-48 to in the championship game. Outstanding. 
The success of the Joy Township High School Gold Special Olympics basketball team is due to a great effort put forth by the team members who committed themselves to producing their best for the Joy Township High School. The winning gold team roster consists of nine outstanding athletes. Uh, Mauricio Ortega, Jesse McMorris, Marguerite Ezel, Hannah Smith, Keyshawn Steele, Christian Cisneros, Steve Oberding, Adam Aries, and Tim Formhall, along with coaches Mr. Vern Jordan and Mr. Cameron Majeris. Uh, now therefore, uh, be it resolved, I, Robert Odekirk, along with the City of Joliet and on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby recognize the accomplishments of the Joliet Township High School Gold Special <coughs> Olympics basketball team and congratulate them on winning the Group 5 State Championship. Great job. Great job. Thank you for all the support you guys did for us. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Awesome. Good. Come on in here. Phil, right in front. Chewbacca's not on your team, is he? <laughs> Great job. Kind of line right up here. There you go. Good job, guys. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too tall. Jim Trisna, we just finished our policy two weeks ago about signs. Are we going to be reaching out to Joliet Central to make sure they get a sign for the state championship? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, there, if you think an approach, they could get a hold of me, that'd be great. School but, officials, uh, if you can call. Jim Trisna, Joliet Public Works, please. 815-724-4200. Thank you. 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 Next is a proclamation recognizing the month of May 2018 as Preservation Month. Okay, we have a lot of them here tonight, so <clears throat> let's get going. Good. Good. Okay, proclamation, whereas May is National Preservation Month which celebrates the places that are meaningful to us and our communities. There are numerous historic buildings and properties in the city of Joliet. These include two national register districts, a number of national registered landmarks, several local historic districts, and numerous local landmarks in addition to undesignated buildings and properties. All these places are worth seeing, <coughs> saving, and celebrating. City of Joliet, through its Historic Preservation Commission, celebrates Preservation Month with an annual Preservation Award, which is presented to recognize local efforts in preserving our architectural heritage. Now, therefore, I, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby recognize the contributions and dedication of the Joliet Historic Preservation Commission and proclaim May as Preservation Month in the City of Joliet, and it's dated May 15th and signed by Robert Overkirk, Mayor of City of Joliet. And we have Sarah Stovall here to accept the award. Thank you. On behalf of the <coughs> Commission, um, as Chairwoman, I would like to say thank you to the Council of Mayor. So thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, 
Okay, now the proclamation celebration of Preservation Month. The Joel Historic Preservation Commis Commission wishes to recognize My Grain Brewery for their adaptive reuse of the historic Joliet Union Station located at 50 East Jefferson Street. Are they here? Yes. Okay. Come on up. Come on. Okay. Um, the Beaux Arts style Union Station was designed by famed architect Jarvis Hunt and completed in 1912. The building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. The building has long served as a transportation hub for the city with leasable space. Migraine Brewery has helped preserve the first floor of the historic Joliet Union Station through complete renovation and adaptive reuse of the building and property, <coughs> including preservation of the sod, windows, doors, and columns. The completed renovation maintains the historical integrity of both the interior and exterior while providing a unique dining experience. Now, therefore, I, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet, Illinois, on behalf of the Joliet City Council and the Historic Preservation Commission, extend our most sincere appreciation to My Grain Brewery for their adaptive reuse of the Beaux Arts style Joliet Union Station as we present the 13th annual Joliet Historic Preservation Award. We wish you continued success on your business endeavors. And if you haven't been there, you really need to go. The food is fabulous besides the beer. So congratulations. Thank you. Safety works. Um, thank you guys so much for this. This is, you know, huge for us. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. Two years build out. And I just want to thank the council, the mayor, um, Kendall Jackson, you were fabulous. David Mackley, I'm, he's not here anymore, but he was awesome. Steve Jones, you guys were, you made this all happen, and thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving down the line, let's see. We have the owners of 310 Bird Street. Are they here? In celebration of Preservation Month, the Historic Preservation Commission wishes to recognize the property owners of 310 Bridge Street for their exterior preservation of the Castellad Romanesque style Searing Mansion. The Searing Mansion was designed by prominent local architect Hugo F. Bame and was built between 1887 and 1889 for Fred Searing, owner of the adjacent Fred Searing Brewing Company. The property owners of 310 Bird Street acquired the mansion in 2016 and have helped preserve the exterior of this unique structure by salvaging the front doors, tuck, pony, tuck pointing, the limestone facade, restoring the windows, and unearthing the tunnels on the property. These efforts are part of a plan to create viable commercial space while preserving the history of this property. Now, therefore, I, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet, on behalf of the Joliet City Council and the Historic Preservation Commission, extend our most sincere appreciation to the property owners of 310 Bridge Street for the exterior preservation of the Romanesque style Searing Mansion. As we present the 13th Annual Joliet Historic Preservation Award, and we wish your continuing success in your business endeavors. Signed, Robert Odekirk, dated May 15th. I just want to thank everyone very much. Thank you. Thank you. opening day. Uh, fall, hopefully. <coughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and let's see, the owners of 318 South Midland. Oh, you're right here. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Oh, okay, good. <clears throat> okay, the Joy Historic Preservation Commission wishes to recognize the property owners of 318 South Midland for their interior restoration <coughs> of a 1924 Sears model and craftsman style bungalow. The property owners of 318 South Midland have helped preserve the interior of this craftsman-style bungalow and Sears model home by restoration of original floors and trim, retaining original fixtures, and installing period-appropriate fixtures and cabinetry. It looks gorgeous. Now, therefore, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet, on behalf of the City Council and the Preservation Commission, extend our most sincere appreciation for your interior restoration of the 1924 Sears, Sears model and craftsman style bungalow as we present the 13th annual Joy Historic Preservation Award. Congratulations.
Uh, my name is Lindsay Daniels, and um, we've lived in this home for 10 years. I'm sorry, this is... You're fine. You're it's fine. very personal to me. This has been my life for 10 years, is this home, and um, it's been an honor to live here in Joliet and to um, help bring the history back into this home and make it a part of, um, of the Joliet landscape once again. So thank you so much. Thank you. And as someone that has done the same thing to our home and lives in the historic area, I know your blood, sweat, and tears. And we're still working on ours. Okay, now we have 604 North Rainer. So we saved the best for last. In celebration of Preservation Month in the city of Joliet, the Joliet Historic Preservation Commission wants to recognize the Cathedral of St. Raymond Nonatus for their front facade restoration of the neoclassical style Cathedral of St. Raymond Church located at 604 North Rainer. The Cathedral of St. Raymond Nonatus was completed in 1954 in the neoclassical style to serve as the mother church for the Roman Catholic Joliet Diocese. With its 190-foot bell tower, the cathedral is a prominent landmark on Joliet's skyline. The Cathedral of St. Raymond Anatus has helped preserve the exterior of this unique structure by carefully selecting Indiana limestone cladding for the monumental front pillars and portico to match the limestone cladding on the main church block. Now, therefore, I, Robert Odekirk, Mayor of the City of Joliet. On behalf of the Joliet City Council and Historic Preservation Commission, extend our most sincere appreciation to the Cathedral of St. Raymond Anatus for their front facade restoration of the neoclassical style Cathedral of St. Raymond Church as we present the 13th Annual Joliet Historic Preservation Award and we wish you continuing success in serving our community. And signed, Robert Bodekirk, Mayor of Joliet. On behalf of our rector, Father Brad Baker, thank you so much for this honor. We're very proud of the cathedral, and we're very proud to be the cornerstone of the cathedral neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a proclamation honoring the volunteerism and efforts of organized labor, businesses, and city employees to assist with the cleanup, preservation, and stabilization of the old Joliet prison. I need some water. These are the, the original Avengers over here. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down, guys. And ladies. Come on. All right. <laughs> The people that you see standing and, and gathering around me, I tell you, uh, uh, Your Honor, this is when public and private comes together and make a big difference in our community. So it is with pleasure that I get to read this proclamation. Everybody, come on. Come on down. These, these uh, men and women here are just amazing people who would give up their time and their talents uh, to join in with the city of Joliet. Three Rivers Construction Alliance is a major, a labor management cooperative composed of representative construction and industry organizations bringing to uh, unions and business together. The Will County, Will Grunt and Grundy Counties Building Trade Council represents 28 union locals. Three Rivers Constru uh, Construction Alliance and the Will and Grundy County Building Trade Council agreed to facilitate the donation of time, talent, equipment uh, towards a joint effort between the Joliet Eric Area Historical Museum Prison Committee and the City of Joliet, the staff to stabilize and remove the debris from the old Joliet prison. Whereas on April 21st, over 200, did I say that? 200 
volunteers from the Carpenters <laughs> Local 174, IBEW Local 176, Iron Workers Local 444, Laborers Local 75, Operating Engineers Local 150, Painters Local number 33, Sheet Metal Workers Local number 265, assisted in the stabilization and the debris removal uh, efforts on April 21st, 2018 of the old Joliet prison. Whereas the equipment to complete the stabilization and debris removal task was donated by Lynn Cox and Sons, um, excavating uh, Lynn Bad Construction, PT Ferro Construction, Homer Tree Service, Testa Steel, Corsetti Structural Steel, Imperial Construction, Deconstruction, Birdie Construction, and the, wow, we got everybody in town on this project, and the Ethos uh, Workshop. Whereas the value of the donation of time and equipment is hundreds of thousands of dollars whereas nearly 40 employees from the city of Joliet provided volunteer and labor on May 5th and on May 12th to support the oh. effort of the restoration, preservation, and maintenance of our goal to foster public accessibility <coughs> to this um, facility. Now, therefore, I, Robert Odekirk, the mayor of the city of Joliet, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby declare that the City of Joliet staff, the Joliet Area <coughs> Historical Museum Prison Committee, the Three Rivers Construction Alliance, and the Will and Grundy Building Trades Council formed a public-private partnership based on volunteerism to begin the process of making the old Joliet prison a community asset. Signed, Mayor Robert Odekirk. And guys, I tell you, this is just an amazing, amazing opportunity. And for all of the residents, I know you're hearing me out there, hats off to these guys. When you see them, honk your horn, blow your, turn on your lights and everything else. <laughs> because these guys came and they stood up and they gave back to the community. Thank you so much, you guys. So everybody behind us are the, are the people, the players that got it done. Um, Tom White, all the local unions, they're the ones that helped out. Um, a little bit about what our organization does. Um, if, if I know a lot of you guys have, and girls have been in our uh, meetings. We were called in 1915, we chartered, and we have a charter in our, where we have our meetings. We were called the Joliet Building Trades, and that's when they were organized back in 1915, which is a long time ago, way before any of us. So, you know, Joliet is near and dear to our heart, and Mayor, kudos to you. We, we will help out any way we can for the city of Joliet. It's near and dear to our hearts. Um, a couple classmates from Joliet West, Duck, John Girl, I grew up here, so thank you. Anytime you need us, give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mayor Oderkirk appointments. None this evening. Moving on to approval <clears throat> of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written? So moved. Second. <clears throat> motion seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Aye. Councilman, Sorry. <laughs> aye. <laughs> Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. Citizens to be heard on agenda items. Is there anyone present that would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? Okay. Seeing none, council committee reports, CTIS committee report. CTIS committee met Tuesday, May 8th. Um, the chairwoman, Jan 
Kuhlman could not be there because of an illness. Uh, Chairwoman Betty Gavin and myself, Pat Mudrin, were at the meeting. Uh, we worked on a rough draft of a mission statement that is uh, being circulated to uh, others and the rest of the council. As stated, this is a communication technology and information system committee. I was cautioned by Dave Brainer that my technical information may not be exact, so he's going to make a part of the presentation on a couple very important items. You are technical, so don't, don't worry about it. Uh, basically, we, we got two major projects that are in play right now. I just want to give you an update on each one. Uh, we've talked about it several times over the last couple months. First one's adjudication. We are uh, narrowing down very quickly the selection process of the software that's, that's going to support us with that. Um, final decision should be this week. Um, once that is established, we'll go into the T's and C's of the deal, we'll go through a legal cycle. Um, my guess is within a month or so that project will be kicked off and more it, it, it'll, it'll drive into an implementation phase. Uh, this is in coordination with all the ordinance changes that we've just made. Uh, so there's, there's like a tag team approach here to, to getting us to uh, this adjudication process. So that's some good news. Uh, the second project that we're working on is the to try to establish an asset management system for the city and of course this is something that we approached last year council asked us to go back and try to um, look at other options um, we did that uh, Allison's in the back there as well and, and a team of seven other people visited um, Niles we also visited Evanston to see um, a product that we believe is going to be the right fit for uh, for the city uh, this included another call to a very uh, like city like ours, uh, Thornton, Colorado. We had a long call with their uh, CIO as well. And bottom line is we think we've got a really good option, um, but we just need to nail down again some of the details on that. Um, we, we did run this by CTAS conceptually, but as soon as we get all the lockdown details, we'll be running this through public service. We'll also be running this through finance. Uh, just to make sure that we that everybody's on board and understands what we're getting into here. This is going to be a large project. We're putting $170 million worth of pipe and labor to, to you know with, with our around the uh, city over the next five to ten years. Today we track all that in Excel. Okay, so we need this system, but we're making sure it's the right one. And it's the right match for the city, and uh, so we got a couple more things to, to iron out. But I'm very hopeful that this thing will be kicked off within the next three, four months. Any questions on this? Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. That's the rest of my meeting. Finance committee report. You know, the finance committee comprised of Councilman Burl and Councilman Mudrum met at 5:30 this evening to uh, review uh, several items. The first thing was a discussion of sales tax. Um, as you know, we, uh, the state charges 6.25%, uh, 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 which we receive 1% of that. And um, our home rule sales tax is 1.75%. Back in, um, uh, since uh, about 2010, it has been constantly uh, in increasing and uh, it's continued that in 2017 with a uh, total sales tax of $47 million. It is our second largest um, uh, source of uh, income for the city of Joliet. We uh, also had a partial discussion on the overtime budget. Um, Kim Mahalich gave us a report on overtime by department. Uh, so it's a it's a, a report in progress. Uh, next month, he will show us uh, what the reasons for the overtime was, whether it was unfilled positions or, or whatever, and uh, how it relates to unfilled positions and what the balance, what the net effect is. So we'll have a, a better <coughs> grasp on it next month. Um, we uh, reviewed the 
we approve the renewals of the health care and workers' comp consulting services. Um, the authorization to approve reconciliation true up. Um, also reviewed the, uh, uh, we want to change the ordinance. Uh, we approved the change in the ordinance to come to full council that uh, when we receive personal checks uh, for water bills or whatever the uh, fee, whatever the uh, service is, that uh, we um, currently are um, being charged $30 by the bank for any checks that are returned to us for non-sufficient funds. So um, the, the new ordinance would be a $15 transaction fee in addition to a $5 administrative fee on top of the $30 what is, what is charged by the bank. Because right now it's, it's costing us money. There are quite a few NSF checks that are, are coming back. Um, also, we uh, review, reviewed the authorization to award a contract for the United Electronic Payment System to Paymentus. Uh, there's a representative here this evening. He's going to give a, a very brief uh, outline of what it's all about. But basically, it's, it's uh, the option of paying uh, for city services online. Uh, you can do it with credit card. There'll be a fee. You can do it through your bank ac your checking account or, or several different ways. So if, if, if you would mind uh, giving a little presentation. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, distinguished uh, council, all the citizens here and the uh, city officials. Uh, my name is Jerry S. McClendon. I'm the Senior Director of Paymentus Corporation. We are the electronic billing and payment processing partner for the city of Joliet and have been proudly since uh, 2011. So I want to publicly start by thanking you all for your continued partnership uh, to allow us to execute seamlessly for your citizens. We're going to continue to evolve and continue to demonstrate innovation here with the city by offering a fully responsive payment portal that will allow the citizens to pay any invoiced amount, any statement amount uh, that you seek revenue around. They will now be able to execute a payment via the web through what's called an expedited one-time payment experience. They can do that without having to log in or create credentials. They'll also have the ability to now pay through what's called a customer portal, which will allow them to create a profile where they can securely store payment methods so they don't have to re-enter them again in the future. So it makes it a little more seamless for their payment experience and helping the city to collect faster. In addition, we'll allow your citizens to have what's called a stored digital wallet so that they can go in seamlessly, save information, and will never have to re-enter every single time that they execute a payment, which will not only help uh, the the standard citizen, but particularly help the senior citizen and the elder population here to execute more seamlessly. In addition to that, we're also incorporating some additional functionality which will allow citizens to pay at local retailers, as well as to pay via kiosk as a future option, as well as to incorporate automated payments or what are called scheduled payments. So instead of the citizen having to come back every single month, they can actually set up a payment and then set a reminder to themselves that they're going to be executing a payment to the city. That will not only be utilities, but also will carry over for other miscellaneous government services as well. So again, thank you and any questions you might have, I'm glad to is, support. Is there still a limit of $175? Great question. I appreciate you asking that, Councilman. We've taken that $175 and we've actually increased it to $1,000 for citizens who are executing the payment on their own. And then for those who are executing payments here at the city, we've increased it to $50,000 to accommodate your citizens. Great question. Thank you. Got it. And by the way, we did not increase the fee as well in doing that. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. We also uh, reviewed the monthly finance reports, personnel summary, travel expense, and invoices paid, found them to be in order, and recommend their approval. Prison committee report? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> the prison committee met on May 7th at 4 o'clock here in the um, chambers. Uh, we received an update uh, on activities. All activities are regarding the prison, uh, the cleanup, Again, we'd like to thank all of those volunteers that have already given and, and are continuously to give uh, to this project. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to ask Quinn Adamoski if he would come forth. We've got another event that's coming up this weekend, and I would love for Quinn to talk about the volunteer days. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you, Councilwoman. I've had a total of 
22 seconds to prepare for this? Oh, I had no yeah, idea this was happening, so... Stand in the I know you can do it. <laughs> so yes, this weekend, on both Saturday and Sunday, we are having what we're calling Community Volunteer Days. That's on the heels of what the trades did on the 21st and what the city workers did on the 5th and the 12th of May. So the way that we're scheduling this is we have two shifts on Saturday, 9 to 12, 1, and then 1 to 4, and the same on Sunday. So what we're trying to do is have about 100 people sign up per shift, and then we're going to have our coalition members along with city staff there to organize them, put them into particular buildings or in the exterior, depending on the scope of work and weather, and continue the cleanup effort. At this point, we have about 200 people who signed up for various shifts. Some of those people have signed up for multiple shifts. So we're about halfway to where we want to be. Uh, we capped it at 100 just because it's way more manageable. So if anybody's interested, and I hope that they are, they can go to the JolietMuseum.org website or find us on Facebook. And importantly, people need to sign up. We need people to register. And there is a waiver that people need to check off on. And we're hoping that people will arrive there a good half hour beforehand, 15 minutes beforehand, so we can sign them in and get them to their appropriate locations. Does that cover it? Any yeah, other but, questions? For 22 already? seconds, you did all awesome. <laughs> <coughs> Am I free to go? Yeah. Yes, sir. You ready Thank for, you for your time. Or you're dismissed, sir. <laughs> and uh, uh, Steve, is there anything else we need to add to that? I know no, you're no. Um, I mean, besides what you covered in the resolution with regard to the trades, the various contractors, the employees, what Quinn is talking about in terms of the community, we're getting closer and closer to those first tours. So that's the goal here. So that sometime this summer we've got folks coming in, uh, touring that prison, and uh, see what we've been talking about for the last several years. Great, great. So all of our residents out there that want to volunteer, <coughs> You have your instructions on how to do that. And, Your Honor, that is the end of my report. Thank you. Public Service Committee report. The Public Service Committee met today, this afternoon at 4 p.m. here at City Hall in the executive room, or conference room. In attendance was Councilwoman Gavin, who ran the meeting. So I got there a few minutes late, and she did a great job. Thank you. Councilman Dickinson and myself, as well as uh, staff and administrators from Public Works and uh, Public Utilities. Short agenda, um, we did renew or extend uh, the mosquito abatement contract with the specialized mosquito abatement we do use, which are pellets in uh, the sewer system, so to speak, the storm sewer system. So we extended that from 2018 through 2020. So we'll be fighting mosquitoes again this year and into 2020. And um, we did uh, approve the contract for the 2018 uh, roadways resurfacing contract uh, in the amount of about 3.8 million and other than that we had existing projects where we made change orders and final payments on them everything on our committee agenda appears on tonight's city council agenda and everything was voted unanimously to be approved by the city council as a recommendation that's my report mate thank you stadium committee report <clears throat> Stadium Committee met uh, Monday, May 14th. Uh, in attendance was Councilwoman Jan Quillman, Councilman Mike Turk. We had an update from a number of items uh, where the stadium work is today. The Slammers updated uh, where their team is, which has their opening home game tonight, five minutes ago. It started. Um, and we also approved a uh, work order for the city to go out to retain some bids to put a pavilion up in the left field area that could be used for a, per, as a permanent structure. Council folks, anything to add? Rather than the tent, it's replacing the tent. It replaced the tent that had blown down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's my report. Thank you. I show no other reports. Under consent agenda, approval of the minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the pre-council meeting held on April 30th and the minutes of the council meeting held on May 1st stand approved as recorded. Invoices paid report. It's recommended this report be received and placed on file. <coughs> council memo 258-18, position vacancies. It's recommended the city manager be authorized to fill two police patrol officer positions, one public safety 
clerk, one part-time seasonal historic preservation summer intern position and any subsequent vacancies which may occur. Council Memo 259-18, regular payroll for March 16th, 2018 through March 29th, 2018. Three million three hundred ninety-four thousand six hundred and twenty-eight dollars and thirty-one cents. Council Memo Two Sixty Eighteen Regular Payroll for March Thirtieth, Twenty Eighteen through April Twelfth, Twenty Eighteen. Three million three hundred forty-nine thousand two hundred seven dollars and eighty-one cents. It's recommended said regular payroll reports be approved. Is there a motion to approve said consent agenda items? So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Motion carried. Under licenses and permit applications, Council Memo 262-18, issuance of a Class CD liquor license at 3231 Norman Road, Best Western Plus. It's recommended Best Western Plus, located at 3231 Norman Road, be issued a Class CD liquor license. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. It's it's a C, it's a CD license, mm -hmm. so package is that going to be sold out of there? They can they can sell it to be consumed on premises. It's room service, is what it is. Oh, okay. I'll vote aye. <coughs> Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo two sixty three dash eighteen. Issuance of a Class E liquor license at 700 Ruby Street, El Primo Number Two. It's recommended El Primo Number Two, located at 700 Ruby Street, be issued a Class E liquor license. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 264-18, issuance of a Class A liquor license at 1123 Clement Street, Molnar's Tap and Restaurant. It's recommended Molnar's Tap and Restaurant, located at 1123 Clement Street, be issued a Class A liquor license. So moved. Second. In motion and seconded to approve, Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. Under ordinances, <coughs> Council Memo 266-18, ordinances regarding 701 Plainfield Road. It's recommended this Council Memo be tabled to the June 5th Council meeting. Motion to table. Second. It's been motion and seconded <coughs> to table Council Memo 266-18 to the June 5th Council meeting. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. No. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried 7-1. Item 266-18 is, is tabled to the June 5th Council meeting. Council Memo 267-18, ordinances regarding 3021 Plainfield Road. This includes an ordinance approving the vacation of a 0.439 acre portion of Division Street, Stateville Road, right of way near 31, 3021 Plainfield Road, and an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow construction of a new car wash as an accessory use to an auto service station located at 3021 Plainfield Road. It's recommended said ordinances be adopted. So moved. Second. <coughs> Motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 268-18, an ordinance amending Section 2-160, service fee to return checks of the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances, imposing a service charge equal to that charged by the bank utilized by the City, plus $5. It's recommended said ordinance be adopted. Move to approve. Second. Then motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. 
Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 269-18 ordinances regarding administrative adjudication. This includes an ordinance consolidating the fines in the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances into Section 1-8, renamed penalty for violation of code, continuing violations, and updating the general penalty provisions of the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances, consolidating, amending, and updating the penalty section throughout the City Code to reference Section 1-8. Comprehensive or second is a comprehensive ordinance consolidating and updating the procedure for administrative adjudication of the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances, consolidating administrative adjudication into Chapter 3, revising the procedures for administrative adjudication violations, and updating the procedure for appeals to an administrative hearing, and an ordinance amending Chapter 19, Article 2, Division 6, illegally parked, abandoned, inoperable, or stolen vehicles, and Article for impoundment of the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances, revising the procedure to impound disabled and abandoned vehicles and consolidating and updating the impoundment of vehicles involved in certain offenses. It's recommended said ordinances be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. Under resolutions, Council Memo 271-18, a resolution accepting a grant from the Illinois Housing Development Authority's Abandoned Residential Property Municipal Relief Program. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. <coughs> motion carried. Council Memo 272-18, a resolution declaring certain City of Joliet property as surplus. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 273-18, a resolution appropriating motor fuel tax funds in the amount of $3,834,705.60 for the 2018 MFT Roadways Resurfacing Contract A to, to Austin Tyler Construction. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Motion carried. Under bids and contracts, award of contracts. Council Memo 275-18, award a three-year contract for the Unified Electronic Payment System to pay Mentis for approximately $100,000 per year. Council Memo 276-18, award a contract for the 2018 through 2020 City of Joliet Mosquito Abatement Program to Clark Environmental in the amount of $33,048, $33,708, $34,383, respectively. Council Memo 277-18, award a contract for the 2018 Roadways Resurfacing Contract A to Austin Tyler Construction in the amount of $3,834,705.60. It's recommended Council Memos 275 through 277-18 be approved. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion seconded to approve Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. Under amendments, change orders, and payments, Council Memo 280-18 approved change order number four in the amount of $945.47 for the 2017 Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project with Institute Form Technologies. Council Memo 281-18 approved payment of the 2018 membership dues in the amount of $87,792.01 for the Lower Displains Watershed Group. 
Council Memo 282-18 approved change order number one in the amount of $14,805.02 and payment request number three and final in the amount of $99,517.52 for the Black Road over Rock Run Creek Water Main Improvements Project 2017 to Len Cox and Sons Excavating. Council Memo 283-18 approved change order number two in the amount of $13,715 and final payment in the amount of $56,975 to Great Lakes Water Resources Group for the Well 11D Removal Project. Council Memo 284-18 approved change order number one in the amount of $56,400 to Lane Christensen Company for the Well 18D 2018 Rehabilitation Project. And Council Memo 285-18 approved change order number one in the amount of $48,740 to Independent Mechanical Industries, Inc. for the Well 23D Sand Separator Project 2018. It's recommended Council Memos 280-18 through 285-18 be approved. So moved. Second. second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. <coughs> Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried. Next is the city manager's report. Mayor and council just have one point I just want to bring up tonight. Hopefully you uh, have been receiving and reviewing the Illinois Municipal League State House briefing, briefing documents that come out usually towards the end of each week. Uh, I did notice in the May 14th edition that one thing that they ask all members and city officials to do is to please contact our local legislators and ask them to, um, to take a position to uh, restore uh, the 10% of local government distributive funds, which is basically municipal revenue which is uh, remitted by the state back to the municipalities. So once again, to restore the 10% LGDF, that cut that was imposed in 2018. Now, not only has the General Assembly uh, in recent years uh, reduced some of that municipal revenue, uh, they're also asking in any conversation you have with our local legislators to please ask them to uh, refrain from further uh, cuts to municipal revenue. Uh, and as we saw last year, they did impose that administrative fee on sales tax being remitted back to the city uh, cities. I think in finance committee, we discussed how the home rule sales tax is being impacted by that. But it just seems like each year, there just needs to be that continual effort to help make sure that 100% of the municipal revenue that uh, we rely on to provide police, fire, public works, and other services to the city is always a potential target uh, for reduction to help the state in its budget balancing efforts, but would be a significant cut to our ability to continue to provide those services. So once again, uh, as we near the upcoming deadline for at least uh, preparation of the 2018-19 state budget, um, just ask you to please keep that in mind and um, it, you know, be a strong advocate uh, as well as our citizens here in, in Joliet. Please let legislators know that any cut to take away Joliet municipal revenue is going to have a very serious impact on our ability to provide municipal services. So that's the only uh, message I wanted to share with the uh, mayor and council tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It says new business, not for final action or recommendation. Well, I have some good news. I got a phone call from Michael Simulton from the Housing Authority earlier this afternoon. Um, he wanted me to announce tonight to the council they have received uh, grant and funding to build 42 new units in the Liberty Meadows subdivision. It's approximately $10 million worth of grants secured by the Joliet Housing Authority. So great job, Housing Authority and Michael Simulton. And that's, that's great news. The Liberty Meadows project is a great success. Um, and, and to be able to continue to add on to that's good for, for the city of Joliet. Absolutely. Congrats. Next is public comments. Is there anyone that would like to speak under public comments this evening? 
in course. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Just to, uh, oh, beforehand, we did win two out of three, Mr. Mayor, in our Crosstown Classic. Um, but just to uh, talk about what you said, that um, I want to thank you and Councilwoman Betty Gavin uh, for the tour of uh, Fairview Housing Complex this past Friday. And uh, we did receive approval to go ahead uh, with the 42 new homes at Liberty Meadows, which will be primarily for senior citizens or for senior citizens. Um, and hopefully we will be on schedule um, to demolish the existing site at Fairview um, by August or September. Uh, we've submitted our application. Uh, we've received pre-approval from HUD. And uh, this was discussed two or three years ago. Um, we had uh, submitted an application and um, for the demolition of our site at Des Plaines and to build the new home, 68 new homes we did out there. And we had said back then that after that was completed, we would begin the process for demolition at Fairview, followed by um, 40 to 45 new homes in Liberty Meadows as Liberty Meadows too. But again, thank you for um, um, the walk on Friday. I think uh, you, you and Betty Gavin had the opportunity to meet a lot of people and to see their concerns. And uh, hopefully um, by September, um, a lot of the issues which exist there, uh, particularly with um, the escalation of crime, will be in the past because that site will be demolished. And I want to thank the Joliet Police Department for their continued um, uh, work in that area, um, in, in, in um, patrolling the area, and in working with the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak under public comments? This is Mayor and Council comments. <clears throat> Just one thing, Your Honor. Uh, over the weekend, the Joliet Postal Employees organized another food drive event. And I just want to thank them again for their efforts in organizing that. They were able, along with the residents of this fine city, that gave uh, food to our local pantries. So I tell you, it was tons of food and to the employees at the uh, Postal Service, thank you so much. Residents, thank you for your generosity. Excuse me, I just have one quick, uh, just a thank you to uh, Prophetess Oral Holloway and the uh, Ignite Your Fire Ministry. A couple Saturdays ago, they honored myself uh, along with the mayor, so I was in real good company uh, with a dinner and a, a, a program. So I just want to thank them. They, uh, Ignite Your Fire Ministry does a lot of great community service uh, work here in the uh, Joliet community, and they took the time out to stop and uh, honor a few people that has supported them over the years. I'd just like to thank them publicly. Still time to see the Slammers game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget Star Wars Day, June 2nd from 11 to 4. It's a fabulous event if you've never been there. I'm, literally thousands of people come from all over for this event. So if you have nothing to do on Saturday, on the 2nd of June, come on down. That's it. Okay, I have a short list here. Um, number one, on uh, May 4th, the Northern Illinois Food Bank had their official ribbon cutting at 171 South Larkin. It's a very nice addition to our city. We have over 50 agencies in Joliet that work with the food bank, so I'm really glad that the food bank chose Joliet for their South Suburban Region um, headquarters. Congressman Foster was there as well as uh, Larry Walsh Sr., so it was a very nice turnout, and uh, welcome Northern Illinois Food Bank. Number two, uh, there's a ribbon cutting on May 7th at First Secure Community Bank. Um, that's at 2398 Essington Road. Uh, welcome First Secure Community Bank to Joliet. It is a locally owned bank. Um, there was a, on the 8th of May, there was the unveiling of the Bob Hacker Street sign at the corner of Essington and Caton Farm. As I think many residents know, Councilman Hacker was instrumental in securing uh, the deal to, to bring Louis Joliet Mall to Joliet. Um, I know Councilman Chatina was there. Councilman Turk was there. I'm not sure 
Um, there were others, but it was yeah. a really nice crowd. So congratulations, Councilman Hanker, and congratulations to his family that really kind of pushed this issue through City Hall. Um, on May 10th at the courthouse, there was a law enforcement memorial ceremony, um, very well attended. Thank you to our Julia Police for representing our city. There were two, unfortunately, two new people put on the wall, including the husband of our colleague, uh, Councilman Brooke Hernandez Brewer. So um, thank you to the committee for putting that together for honoring fallen law enforcement throughout Will County. Um, on May 11th, there was a downtown cleanup that was scheduled by the City Center Partnership. They did on the 11th and the 12th. Thank you to City Center Partnership for doing that. I know there's more cleanups coming this weekend. We heard about St. John's and Cathedral area will be this Saturday, but there's uh, cleanups throughout the city. Um, and then finally, oh no, I'm sorry, two more. Um, Saturday, Habitat for Humanity began construction on a home on South Midland. WGN TV was there Saturday morning. The weather was miserable, it was about 45 degrees and pouring rain, but um, the Habitat people were out in force, they were not gonna be stopped. So thank you for uh, the representing our city so well. Um, it's, it's great to see Chicago media here for something positive. So thank you for Habitat for Humanity for all the volunteers. And then finally this afternoon, there was another ribbon cutting at 814 Parkwood. The Williams Paralegal Services um, open shop at Parkwood. Um, I would encourage any local residents, if, if you need legal work and you, something less than what a lawyer could do, to certainly check out Mr. Williams. He's a professional. He's going to do a great job up there, and I welcome, welcome him to our community and to the neighborhood. And that's all I have for now. Is there a motion to adjourn? So second. Thank you. The motion seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.